Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the 2024 Derby City Classic. This is the one pocket division. We got a round three match today. Roberto Gomez versus Zachary McKee. This is the leg. Looks like Roberto's going to take that one down. As I said, we're playing one pocket here. Roberto's going to break towards one of those feet pockets. Um, both players get a single pocket right next to Roberto there. And you got to make eight balls in your pocket before your opponent make eight balls in his pocket. That is any ball on the table. Any foul is going to cost you a ball. And that's the basics of one pocket. Whichever direction Roberto breaks towards, that will be his pocket. My name is Summerfield Habner. I'm here with Railbirds Productions. Excited to be here for the Derby City Classic. This is brought to you in part by Bad Boys as well. Thank you very much for their support. And a nice little break there. Roberto spread them pretty open. Uh, typically going to favor the, the better player. A wider spread like this. Doesn't have a great line through there. Um, I mean, that 11 is hanging out in the open. But you got to really own that shot if you're going to take it. Roberto's got a bunch in front of his pocket. I don't think you'll probably take an early risk like that, but by the looks of it, it's... I mean, this is a tough break. Yeah, even, even taking that 11 and pulling back. I mean, the 9's hanging out there. You're probably going to sell a ball. It looks like he can get through there and catch the high side of the 6, but I don't think he can stay below the 12 if he plays that. He's also got to be careful of the 6-4 if he shoots that. He's right to take his time on this one. You can always just play to the back side of a ball also, and that might be what he ends up doing. He looks like he's going through. This is going to take a lot of touch here. Beautiful, beautiful shot. Plays thin off the 10. Gets through that gap, which is not big. That's a lot tougher shot than it looks like. Yeah, leaving Roberto tricky. Um, he really wants to probably just play and push through this six ball here. I would imagine go to the back side of the stack. All right, just creating that distance. And I like that shot, but uh, this just gets easier and easier for Zach from here. I still got to be careful, but I mean, he made the tough one. He's got a lot more room to work with now. He executed that last shot really well. Still no clear path to the four, no clear path to the 12. And it seems a little, it's tough to do something too aggressive here. I mean, that the 11-8 both look terrific to bank, but how you're going to spin around and get under that 12, I, I don't know. 10 ball is in the path, so. I might think about banking that 8 ball and trying to get in the crook between the 11-3. Yeah, that looks like what he's looking at. Uh, again, a terrific shot. Uh, open up a couple balls to your side. Unfortunately, the 10 kind of froze up there, but you don't leave a clear cut here for Roberto. And now you got something working for you over there. Good shot. Playing that 11 back on top of it. That's a nasty little shot. Wedged him in there. Yeah, it really limits his out angle here. Not a whole lot you can do. Just looking it up, Zach is out of Wadsworth, Ohio. He's a 679. Roberto leaning towards the 800 mark. He's a 795, I believe. And like they say, there's no Fargo for one pocket, but 679 is a, is a very proficient player. Uh, and 795 is, I mean, encroaching on the upper level pros for sure. Yeah, boy, this is definitely a tricky shot. 
Yeah, there's just, he's got to go through that way. I'd consider taking a foul here. If you're not going to jack up over that two and move the 11, and I I don't like that shot. Yeah, you're only, you're either shooting off the 11 or the nine. I don't think you can avoid the nine. That's going right at his pocket. I think I'm taking a foul here. If he takes a foul back at you, then, I mean, then you're forced to shoot, but at least take that chance. Oh, he's looking at that 113. And I don't, I don't think it's wired up. It looks a little low of the pocket. But he's so tight in there. Shoot, if anything's wired. Probably worth taking that chance. Yeah, nasty shot by Roberto. Taking a foul. Yeah. That's a smart shot. He opened it up a little more than he wanted to, though. That nine ball does go. Ooh. Yeah, and that's... Roberto's in good shape here. Just opening those balls up. Got fortunate getting back for that 12. That could have got a little greedy for him. Um, he had some balls in the open. So I'd probably come back for the one ball next. Oh, he caught the backside of it. He did not want to do that. Hmm. Yeah, that's, that's a tricky spot. I think he can see enough of the one ball to knock the one out and get between the 14 and 10. I mean, it looks like you're either playing the 13 or the one here. I don't think he's just going to try and leave him long. He's just covered up. Okay, push through the 15 and get under there. I like that too. Nice touch. Got under that 14 ball. Yeah, I, I think you're probably kicking out of this. You're either kicking off this or you're glancing off a ball. I don't really like... Is he playing the three-railer? Or two-railer on the three? Go for that point. Ooh, drills it in the side. That was a nice shot. Good little line through there. Uh, banked out a little bit wide, but still gets on the right side of the balls. Unfortunately, it leaves Roberto a pretty good look to move some things around for him. Probably doesn't necessarily want to move the 14. Or sorry, move the 10-8. Like to be on the back side of the 14. Wow. All right, so plays the combo bank back at the four. An aggressive shot and, I mean, that could cost him. This four ball bank's really easy. You got an easy chance to bank the four and move the eight. Um, really got to pick out where you want your cue ball to be. If you can get it up behind that 2-9, that's good. I mean, it means more to be closer to those balls than anything. Just got to make sure you don't sell wide open bank. I, you know, I... Can't tell if he got lucky or not there. Obviously nothing going. Uh, it looks like the one blocks the 13, but I think the one just banks wide open for him. Roberto's... I'd be surprised to see him not shoot that. He's up three to negative one here. Doesn't really want to just take a flyer.
playing defensive. He didn't like it. Leaves him doubled up on the 13 1. I kind of like playing off the nine and trying to get behind the one. You're just playing behind a single ball here, so that's it's tricky, but ideally you're trying to protect that ball. Looks like he's trying to play the 13 bank combo. Now just trying to get up behind that one. Moves a 13. Uh, doesn't protect his ball though, so that's going to go on a little trip. Or he's just going to continue to use that as a blocking ball. There's nothing more frustrating than being stuck in your hole behind a ball. Wow, just stuck that cue ball. Beautiful, beautiful control there. I mean, that's a big swing to move the ball that little. Very nice shot there. Spots one up. Spots two up. I didn't see that second one fall. Six, nine, twelve. Yep. 12 up there. Yikes. Yeah, it's starting to get pretty bad here. He's got to get under that 1-4. Up on the rail. No real clear path. He's got so much threatening in front of Roberto's hole. Yeah, looking at drawn off the 13 and coming down. I would be real sure those balls are straight too. It looks like that 13 is off center or the two is off center. Yeah, before you shoot these, you really want to make sure they're straight. Otherwise, it just comes off in a real different way. You want to be able to rely on that line. It does look like he could not jack up and just play kind of a high ball with some right to get over to that rail and under the one. He is going to jack up. Tricky stroke. Gets all the way under there. Really effective shot. Getting himself out of trouble. Nice. Very nice hit. Roberto's being pretty cautious here. He doesn't want to let Zach see anything. Um, he's passed on enough banks here. I don't think he'll bank that 11. Wouldn't be surprised to see him just go under the 14 again. So he wants to move that 14. And a wonderful catch. Finally moves that 14. He's sick of trying to get under it. I like playing that back at Roberto here. I like trying to come off the 14 and get under the one. He could definitely stand to move some balls here. I also like playing the four one off the bottom side of the one to get both those balls out. Looking at this bank and He's right to do so. I don't think the six passes. You can probably stay on the right far enough to avoid the 15. Makes that a little bit wide, but does get all the way down to the rail. Leaves Roberto a tester. And he hasn't really taken too many offensive opportunities, so I'll probably pass. I mean, the, the nine ball you can shoot, and it's fairly free. Combo on the seven, two. Boy, I can't really tell how he's going to contact the 13 from there. Kind of got to be at the table to see that one. Just playing off that. Nice shot. Uh, great path through those balls. 
real safe shot. I guess that's what I mean about moving the 4-1 last time is now you're definitely in a trickier spot. Yeah, boy, oh boy. Can try to move it all here. Looks like you can see the edge of the seven, I would imagine. He's looking at either coming off the edge of a ball and getting to the backside of that 5-6 or just leaving him up table, probably playing off the 13. Uh, trouble with that is the two ball still back cuts and it's a pretty easy way to get back on the other side of the table. I like just kicking behind the 5-8. I think that's a really good plan if that's what he's looking at. He's just taking... Okay. Plays the two, two rails. Gets it real close. Nice shot. I didn't see that at all. Yeah, excellent attempt there. Blocks things out for him. Yeah, Roberto's got a... He hasn't really taken a lot of risks here. I'd be surprised to see him play this carom off the four. Is that what he's looking at? Yeah, with a clear path to the two. All right, he likes it. Drills it. It's a really nice shot. Yeah, when those start to be hangers, the table really opens up for you. So coming back with a 13. All the way around for the 14. Doesn't quite get there. Still good on the 13. That was close, though. He needs three. It's a good. Does he get there this time? Still runs a little short. Not gonna like that. He's probably just gonna move that too. It's a nice controlled shot. All right, well, two to go. Zachary needs nine of them. Uh, he liked that bank last time to get behind the stack, and he hit it really well. I don't see why you wouldn't hit that 10. Looks like that gets you over to that side of the table. You just got to look out for the 15 ball. Hit it really good. I think Roberto will probably move both those balls. Just bank that 10 right at the 9. Let it go. Wow. Doesn't get away with that one. Well, nothing doing for the next one, but you got a dead, dead spot shot here. Hopefully you can get back on the 14. Unfortunately, things are just moved out of your side of the table. Yeah, you get a chance to get back in this game here. If you're not going to play 9 to the 14, maybe you're going to try to move those balls over on the right side of the table. Comes into the back side of the 15. Man, that is a bummer. Now the six goes. I think I kind of want to move the six. I'm going to try to bank the six ball around that 10, and I'm going to try to not move the eight. Well, looks like you're going to end up moving the eight five. I think that's still my shot. Really want to make sure I get that six ball close. Don't want to over hit this and sell a bank. Hit it 
Man, just about drills it. Back to even, spots it up. Free bank here for Roberto, that's... Yeah, the pass around the six. You make this bank, you're dead in on the nine too. A uh, little high. Couldn't have been a lot closer. Looks like he looks like he's got the six. I don't think he's gonna try and pull that out. You'd sure like to remove that, but from that distance, it's a lot of control. Let's see what he's got up his sleeve. Zach's come with some shots. Just gonna make it for him. I think that's your play. Two railer on the 14. He doesn't like it. Yeah, you want to keep the pressure on, but I don't know why Roberto would take a chance here. Banging that nine ball. Getting on the back side of the 14. Man, almost got right behind that 14. That was pretty. Yeah, I don't think that 15... Looks like he's going to try and get the 15 around the 8. It's going to go wide. Well, get something over on his side. I think I'm going to try to play that a little more pocket speed. Uh, just to leave it a little bit closer. Try to not leave this much of a bank on the 15. Trying to play the three-railer. That's not going to pan out great. Wow. All right, another opportunity here for Zach. Roberto kind of forcing things there. Trying to get out of this game. Last thing you want to do is let this guy back in. He can shoot. I like coming down for the one here. I feel pretty comfortable being that close to the pocket, spinning it with inside. He's coming all the way back around for the 14. Rattles that ball. I think Roberto's going to give that one to him. Oh, no way. Wow. <laughs> well, Roberto dogged a ball. Uh, kind of seems to think it rolled off. He hit, hit that ball pretty quick. Another good chance here, so all of a sudden it's 6 nothing. Zach's got a few open balls. It, it's close to your work right there. Gotta make sure you spin around that one. If that's where you're going. Coming back for the one, the point is big from there. Thinking about jacking up. Think about banking the 14 back at the 15. Yeah, especially if you can hold on that right side of the table. Over, cut it a little bit, look out for that point. Ooh, just don't want to sell that one. Yeah, so hit a little wide, and he wouldn't have hit that wide had he... Or sorry, the cue ball wouldn't have come back so much had he hit that ball like you wanted to. Spot shot. Needs two. Dogs it. Yep, spot shots, man. That's something to practice, without a doubt. Every one of us. 
Um, it's a tough one to reach. I think he he might try to bank that ball again. Might try to go rail first and just spin around for the 14. I feel like it's a lot easier to just spin around that than it is to try and draw on top of it. Nice and easy here. Good shot. The path to come up and back is there uh, just between that 410, but it's taking a big old swing. You just rattled the ball earlier. Might just lay up for the one ball next. Might try to play the four so that you got a couple balls bankable. Yeah, I like that. He's looking at the two railer. Yeah, if you got room around, he's playing the two. And to get behind the 10, what a nasty shot. Beautiful shot, Zach. All right, that's only a couple balls, but that's a couple big balls. You got something sitting in front of your hole. He's buried behind the 10. Nice shot. You got a six, two ball count and you're stuck. Looks like he's going to try and play behind the four. Doesn't get there. And Zach's got a decision to make here. You can move that one ball and have a good chance at it. It's not, you, I mean, you just got to get back on the right side of things. I don't think taking the two is worth it at this point. I think you want to cut that one. It's a pretty good. Is it going to slip in? Might be better that thing hangs. I mean, you'd like to get those couple balls, but... Just going to try to make that one. Probably play high side of the two. Okay. Well, makes the one. Still leaves the two ball there. Three to six. Yeah, try to play off that four, get behind the ten again. You really like that spot. It's a pretty free attempt. Um, and yeah, it's a, it's a great chance if it goes well. It's going to be another tricky position for him. So just cut it a little bit thin. I think, yeah, I think that's the shot right there. And that's tough. I mean, you're nine feet away trying to get behind a single ball. Roberto doesn't want to see this slip away any further. I'm going to move the two. Yeah, it's a pretty free bank to get over there. Ooh, and got very fortunate off that point. If he would have nudged that 10, that could have been trouble. Looks like he can play the 2 into the 9. Send them both packing if he wants to. I would definitely want to move these balls. I don't like... If I'm leaving them low, I don't want to leave anything down there with him. He could also just play into the nine. Move in the nine. He's done a great job coming up with something offensive though, while getting safe. I don't think the Z banks there on the two railer because of the four. I do think he'll just play the two into the nine. Tried to come across it. Gets away with it. Ooh, fortunate shot there. 
does leave Roberta this one railer. Hangs it up. Yep. He's going to have to give this to him. The question is, does he give it to him and follow it in? I like, yeah, I like 6-2 a lot more than 7-3. I think I'm going to try to follow this ball in. It's hard to tell with the angle here, though. It could be tougher than it looks. Just gives it to him. Almost leaks out on that nine. Roberto's got a free two railer on the four ball. He can probably get behind the five eight here. That could be curtains. He was just kicking that. Huh. Guess he didn't like the two railer. Yeah, you really want to do everything you can to not let him swing at things. Either come across the top of the 9 or knock the 9 up towards a 5-8. I like kind of trying to jam him up over there. If you really want to get aggressive, I mean, you have a... I don't think the 3-railer on the 4 is there. I think the cue ball comes in the path. 5-8 would come in the path there also. Coming off the four, trying to get behind the nine, it looks like. Wow. Well, replaces the nine with the four. It gets down there. Pretty fortunate, but that was a really nice stroke. Good shot, Zach. Trying to catch the backside of that nine, just getting them all the way down the table. Roberto saw Zach catch the double kiss and probably just going to try and leave distance and hope he's going to make a mistake again. Pretty open bank on the 10, but that four ball's big from there. So, just trying to hold up. I think he's got the angle to hold there. If not, he's trying to run around. I don't want to leave Roberto this four ball for the win at all. Coming all the way around. Does he get there? Doesn't get there. All right. Well, yeah, you're down 7-3. I get it. You're probably going to leave a shot one way or the other. Zach says, let's move on. It's my break this time. Roberto Gomez taking down game number one. This is Zach to break. Stream you're enjoying here brought to you by Hustlin' Clothing USA, JB Custom Q Cases, Jerry Olivier Custom Qs, Lipman Lights, and Locked and Loaded Custom Billiard Apparel. Thanks for... Let's give another shout out to Bad Boys for their support on the stream. Big part of Derby City Classic, and we appreciate their all their support. This Derby City, my favorite pool tournament in the world, man. Largest one pocket tournament in the world, largest bank pool tournament in the world. Like we said, this is round three. Zach has one loss. Roberto still without a loss. So this is elimination round for Zach. Nasty little break. Whew. Uh, not on the rail, but gets close enough to the pack that he does not have a good way through there. I mean, Roberto immediately looks at the eight ball, and I don't know how much you know about trying to spin under that 12, but it's no fun. Uh, might think about... 
Yeah, I was thinking about leaving him long, just getting something over there. That's that's what I don't do with that shot that I really need to recognize is if I mean I can quadruple him up here and get out of a shot, but if I don't have something on my side, I'm not I'm no threat whatsoever. So kind of forced to look at the eight here. It looks like he could play bank the eight and come into the pack if he'd like to. Also looks like I mean, there's a bunch of threatening balls down there. I can't tell if that 10 goes at it off the 6 ball. Uh, the 14, 15 off the 1. He's looking at the 5, 1. Definitely get some balls moving. Where your cue ball ends up means everything here. You've already got the some threatening balls. You don't want to jam it up too much over there. Looks like shooting the 5, 1. Trying to stay under the eight ball here. I think I might have wanted to use the pack a little more. Berto's got a pretty clear path here. He can see the 12, he can see the one. We saw him play that really tight proximity high ball to stick. Not certain he's going to be able to do the same type of shot here. 12 into the 1. Yeah, he had to make something big happen. You take big risks. Uh, but boy, did he get lucky there. Makes one for Zach. Oh my gosh. <laughs> That's a brutal shot. Oh. He's got the room, though. Yeah. <laughs> Roberto trying to take his ball. Zach says, I don't think so. I'm going to take that one. I think you just got to play off the 13, get under that 15. Roberto got a little fortunate, but played a nice shot. Um, yeah, if you get under this 15, you can get your advantage right back here. Yeah, so didn't really want to take that risk. It's uh, pretty free. Just the removal there. Yeah, it keeps him below the two ball so he can't see the 15. And at this point, that was your big advantage. So play off the 14 behind the 15. That was your real threatening ball, though. It's looking at the 14 off the 5, maybe? Got away with it. I think in that situation, I care a little more about getting underneath the 15. The 15 is such a big ball there. It's almost a ball width off the rail. You got a lot of room to get to really stick him there. Wow. Aggressive there for Roberto. Thought he could at least get it on his side. He does so, but he does so off the point. Yeah, I don't think Zach can afford to shoot any of these balls. I'm probably looking at playing off the 10 or the 5 to try and get between the 14 13. Just looking at the combo. It's pretty straight. Knocks it down. Good shot. Boy, that's... It's a big swing, man. Beautiful shot there. Uh, 
seven ball you can get close. I think that's the shot. Get over on the rail. Oh, man. That was tracking good, too. Uh, gets it on a side, though. Does a good job protecting it. I don't think any of those balls bang for Roberto. Yep, shaking things up. He didn't like the way they were turned. Now you got a ball over there. I really like playing off the four underneath the 15. He's going to bank that four again. It's going to come a little wide, it looks like. Nope, just gets it. Oh, man. It's got to get to that side rail and under the 15. Really unfortunate scratch there. And Roberto needs eight. Yeah, boy, if he gets in, in between that 11 to 6, this could be trouble. Let's start with the 8 ball, though. Yeah, saw it here first, folks. We all miss balls. It's hard to explain to people that don't play one pocket that that's not an easy shot. Um, it's, it's really hard to treat every shot in one pocket like... A, a shot in nine ball. I can't describe it, and you really got to get out of your head to be able to do it, but Roberto obviously missing a ball he never would normally miss. And, I mean, Zach's got a chance at winning this game. He's in a better position than Roberto was. Straight shooter. Drills that ball. Just the way he shot that last combo, you can tell this guy, he shoots. I think probably four to the seven. I guess four to the ten. If you can move that two six, you'd like to, but I think that's what he was going for. It was just a little nudge. Ten ball's a great chance to move the two six here. You just don't want to get stuck behind it. It's really easy to get stuck there. He's just gonna draw back on the seven. Another good way to shoot it. Now's your great chance to go into those balls. Really want to hit the two and not the six. Perfect shot. Beautiful. Opens those balls up. You're probably playing two to the six ball here. Zach needs three. They're all there if he can get under that nine. Looks like he's trying to punch down off the six for the nine now. It looked really straight to me, but he can see it way better than I can. Kind of got to force an angle. Yee. Wanted a little more out of that. I think I might have started with the two there. Moving the 15 and the 14 here. All right. He says he'll take his six. It's going to be interesting to see how Roberto responds. That's, I mean, that gives you a real breath of fresh air when guy dogs a ball like that. on the nine over there. Yeah, boy, banking any of those balls and not selling a shot feels like asking a lot. Two balls too tight. The 14 sells you out. The side pocket's huge from there. 
two-railer on the 13 if you got the stroke to get behind the nine. I think that can definitely work out. In fact, I think that's what I'm shooting. It's tough to not sell a bank on the nine or two, though. I think he's thinking about rolling forward on the 14 ball. I don't want to give Roberto another chance to think about that 8 ball and get it back. I like the 2 railer on the 13. Um, probably going to hit it a little wide. Alright, he's going to draw off the 2 ball. Just playing into the 3 to control the speed. all the way up to the table two rails into the 13 ball yep I mean kind of sells a free bank here for Zach on the 12 looks like he can just nip draw that back as long as he gets behind the 15 5 he should be fine He's got to look at that nine ball. <clears throat> I'm not sure Roberto likes the idea of a tester right now. Um, can't tell if he can see the three. If he can see enough of the three, he might play the three down and over and back to protect against the 12. He really can't give an inch to Zach here. Playing behind the two. Very nice touch. think about jacking up and just nip drawing off that two back into the rail he didn't take a swing last time I don't think he will this time I'd be more afraid of the two him shooting the two three but you got the 13 14 nine blocking those he looks like he's gonna thin off the two and just spin underneath I don't like giving up my ball from there Getting the crook between the 515. Wow. Nice shot. That's terrific. Good job controlling that cue ball. Boy, I'm watching that hit real close. It's a good. That is not an easy shot. I say that a lot in this game. It's one of my favorite things about One Pocket. You're constantly forced into situations where you're shooting something in a way you don't necessarily want to or it's not natural. Love this game. Uh, clear path off the five behind the two three. If that's what he likes. a spot over there. Get at all his options. 
Yeah, you can definitely spin off the 15. Is he trying to get... All right, so definitely give up your ball there. And might have given up a bank on the five. It seems like Roberto would take the chance to move that 12, but if he's got a straight back on the five, he might take it. Like we said, he is down 6 nothing, so he's got to make something offensive happen, but he also can't give up an inch. Really got to make sure not to sell that 8-15. It's an easy way to lose a game. Zach's got a decision here. That's a long cut on that 12 ball. It's a big side pocket by the five ball. He likes the combos. Uh, the 14-9 move the 13 is there. Uh, I, I would prefer to cut the five and come down for the 12. I think that's your best path to get out here. Barely missed that ball. That was it. Two inches away. Pretty free bank here for Roberto. Over hits it too. Boy, he's not going to like that one bit. We saw Roberto do it a little bit ago. Is he going to play off the 5 into the 12, or does he have the room to just cut the 12? 12 is off the rail. Yeah, I mean, that's a game right there. It's tough to get back on that five. You almost got an easier time getting on the 15. Yeah, he's looking over there too. That's what I like about moving the five is you, at least you open up a bank for yourself, but the 12 was a lot easier than I thought it was. It's like spinning to the left side of that eight ball. Came a little bit wide. Don't want to get too eager. If that five is frozen, and it is, I, I think he'll probably just shoot that. If it's on the rail, it's a lot easier. Just rail first. Look out, corner pocket. Oh, gets away with it. Whew, nice shot there for Zach. All right, 1-1. One, one. Excellent shooting there. He had Roberto on his heels. All right, here we are at the Derby City Classic. This is the event sponsors. Diamond Billiard Products. That's all the tables you see out here, all the lights. The best tables in the world. Simona's Cloth. Aramith Billiard Balls. Outsville Accurac. They make the templates for the nine ball and the Bigfoot Challenge here at Derby City, AccuStats Video Productions, and Master Billiard Shock. Thanks for tuning in here at Railbirds. My name is Summerfield Habiner. If you guys like what you're seeing, like what you're hearing, hit that like button, hit the subscribe. That'll let, let you know every time we go live with new Derby City action. Roberto gets his break back. Breaks him good again. We've seen two really good breaks and two really good responses to those breaks. Roberto stealing his pocket back. Ooh. This is... Ooh. 
That's a tough break. Uh, I don't think he can see an edge of the seven. Yeah, he's looking at kicking to the back side of the seven. And I, boy, if you hit it, that's definitely the shot. I mean, you're kicking to thin off the seven to try and get to that side rail, ideally behind the five. This is one of those things that, I mean, only a one pocket player would practice. It comes up so much. Nice shot. Fortunately, doesn't leave a bank there. Looking like he's gonna thin off the 15 and go to the, right now, the lower left-hand corner pocket. Looking at the offensive plays down here. I like, I like moving the one off that rail and getting behind the pack. I think that's a really smart shot. Barely hitting that ball. It's so much more of a threat from that position. So have poor 10 looking for Zach. It's a little low. Man, oh man, if you're not kicking under that one, I'm either taking a foul or putting myself behind behind the stack here. Can bank that one and you can use the nine seven. Definitely a couple ways to kick here. I like kicking long rail. I feel like I got a better chance of getting to the rail and getting safe. You might have a clear path for that nine. If you can play the nine around the 511 and follow with the cue ball, touchy shot, real touchy. Kind of looking at that kick under the one. I like going long rail. I feel like I have more room to work with. Um, the gap between that 15-5 one just feels bigger. Uh, kind of got to look at the 410. You're looking at playing something that dangerous. And he is. This will be a big shot. Beautiful shot. Uh, played it in a very safe way. So, doesn't get himself another shot afterwards, but gets out of that one, gets a ball. From here, you can thin off the 14 under the 1. Still a, a touchy little shot. Looks like he's got a line on the 11. No, he's playing off that 14. Look out. Oh, caught it a little thin. Yeah, boy, that was it's just a tough rack to get out of. Roberto taking a quick call here. Putting some thought into this eight and out. He cracks me up. Back to my game. Probably spin around underneath the 11. Trying to move those. Yeah, under the 11's dangerous. That's dangerous too though, because all of a sudden you got an off angle combo or a big back cut on the two. 14 11 is the safest shot here. Almost shooting the 14 at the hole. Does he get high enough? It looks like it. All right, 1-1. One, one. If you want to leave him underneath the 11 to not sell a bank, 
You can play off the two ball here. Can kick to the 14, but he had a pretty easy chance of selling the 11 there. That's one of the trickiest things about playing here at Derby City. It seems like no matter where you are, somebody's walking through your game all the time. Those guys just walked around the spectator chairs and right by the table. A good thing to avoid if you're ever at the Derby City Classic. I think off the two behind the 11 is my favorite shot here. I really don't want to let Roberto get going. He's got a bunch working for him on his side. At 15, nine goes. I know he wants to get something going, but sometimes you just gotta take that one more shot to get yourself a better look. Wow. Gets away with it. He saw something there I didn't. He wanted to move both those balls. Again, we're going to see that same just thin off the two. Looking at all his options. I like this also. It's it just hard enough again. He's taking a look at it. He might have the underside of that too. If he's got the underside of the two, then Roberto made a mistake there. Doesn't want to let him see that ball. Looks like he's got it. Can he move it and not move that cue ball? Yeah. Ooh. It's getting a little congested for Roberto over there. Gotta take a look at that 13-12 and see if they go. I don't think either one of them go. Eight ball probably passes the five. Might just end up taking this combo. Mm -hmm. Yeah, nothing doing on that 14-11. Expect him to make that one. Now that eight's open. Doesn't look like he's got the angle to move the seven, six, three, so probably over for the four ball next. He needs four. Four ball does pass the 11, but it's not easy. I think he kind of just has to come back into the seven, six, three here. Ideally hit into the seven ball, or sorry, into the six ball. Opening up the three. I, I think that's about it. Taking a good look at it. Needs four. Play this behind the back. Nice shot there. Doesn't get around for it though. Plays that aggressive shot, triples him up. Looks like a good shot to me.
Looks like playing off the high side of the 12 here. All right, he goes right into it, tries to move some balls. And does so, clears it out a little bit. Roberto just trying to put him back on the rail, doesn't quite get there. Not sure if he'll try to make contact with his 3-7. Yep, move something over. Yeah, going up table. I could think about taking on this six and making contact with a nine. Just moving them both. Getting the seven out of there. Let's just keep kind of tying up there for Roberto. Kind of like the 15 into the 7, put him behind the 6. I like putting him on the ball that I'd like him to move, if at all possible. Earthquake! Ooh, doesn't want to make that ball. Not ideal there. Selling a bank, Robert only needs three. I, I don't think he can fire this hard enough to get back up for the 11. Just gotta buckle down and try to make this. Very makeable bank, hits it a little high. Confirming the ball count. Yeah, Zach had spotted a ball while he was waiting for that one to roll out. Just little pop that 10 out, stick on the rail. Nice control. Just moving the cue ball down rail here. Force a little distance on Zach. He does sell him a bank on the six. It's, I mean, that's a teaser, though. He didn't do it on accident. So you got to decide whether or not he fell into his trap or whether or not he, he took a risk he shouldn't have. It's a smart shot. Easy path to just follow down, get some glues him on that rail. Just knocking that six out of bankable range.
Move the 11 ball here. Yeah, I, I like what he's looking at. I would like to get back behind there too. It's a dangerous region though. Um, yeah, I think he might just make that ball and get up behind the 13-3. I like that. Opens up a threatening ball for both players. Sticks him in a spot. You just really got to make sure of that cue ball. Good shot. Does sell Roberto a, a bank on the six, though, also. Not a clear path to the pocket, but he can get it over by his hole for sure. Ten ball moves also. Just coming back down table. Kind of play that same shot off the uh, right side of the nine right now. You like that spot. Kind of knock your knock your nine ball a little more bankable for you. Gets there. Hope he didn't leave a back cut on that nine, because that's pretty free. Yeah, Robert only needing three, he's shooting. Never mind, just knocking it on his side, getting to the foot rail. Good control. Addressing his fans. Jacking up, elevating, getting that nine over to his side and trying to get back down to the foot rail. Little bit of an under hit. Is he playing this two railer? Just moving the six. Yeah, Roberto really not wanting to give up a lead at this point. Zach's got to make something happen, and he's got a pretty free bank on this 14. It's in a dangerous spot, but, I mean, you go, you're go, you going to go into that around the 610 area. As long as you're not going to sell the 7, you should be fine. what I was afraid of. I, I'd be really surprised to not see Roberto shoot this. It's only two balls out in the open. You got a 5-1 lead. Probably try to come back over for the 11 next. all the way down for the 14. Yeah, played that pretty safe. Roberto's not feeling great about his pocketing right now. Just gonna stiff this and take his medicine, bank the nine next. Wow. Missed that ball really wide. Alright, only needs two, but leaves Zach a couple balls here. 14 ball. Looks like he kind of has to come around three rails. That's a big draw stroke. Barely under hits it. Almost got there. Can't really afford to bank that nine. Got to think about the Z-Bank here. Yeah, that's what he's lining up. Got a pretty good line with the cue ball on the Z-Bank also.
Hit it really good. Wow, real good. Almost gets it in there. Not today, though. It's a pretty free three-railer if he likes it. He's just kicking it out. That ball was tracking, too. Yeah. Smart shot for Roberto there. Let's knock the 11 back behind the 610. Yep. The wedge in full effect. I like the 11 into the 9. Uh, maybe you make them both. Try to get under the 6. Uh, the 13-3 is starting to look dangerous. You might want to move that. Yeah. Long ways away from his work. Roberto not ready to move anything quite yet. Zach's probably going to thin off this 11 and come back down table. Might choose to not play the 11. He doesn't want to make that 9 from this angle. Play the 12 instead. Makes the 9 anyway, sells that bank. Yeah. That's not what he wanted. <clears throat> Two to go for Roberto. Wide again. Uh, hangs it close to the pocket. I think you're going to see Zach get that one out. A lot of players are going to kick and come across the face of that ball, try and get it back towards their hole. He might just kick it on out of there. Nice play. Looks like he's kicking behind the 11. Nasty shot. Nasty, nasty shot. Beautiful. Yeah, that hurts. Yeah, at this point, he's going to have to get ticky-tack behind those balls, and it's real easy to wedge yourself into a trap. You can think about the carom, the 12 off the 3 towards your hole. The 3 kind of moves your direction also. If you can get behind the six, definitely a more aggressive play, but you gotta, gotta turn this around somehow. Obviously you can just play off the 10 behind those balls. Anything you can do to get those balls down table towards your hole though. Makes Roberto's job a lot more difficult. I think he's looking at jacking up and cutting the six down there. Coming back off the head rail. Now just moving it over there and sticking on the 12. Z banking it towards his hole. Very aggressive. But gives you a chance. Three to the 11. He missed it. 
Well, Superman not feeling all that super today, man. Um, he's dogged a couple balls, definitely giving Zack a chance. Again, this is elimination round for Zack, so you know he wants to pull this win down. And he's in a tricky spot. Can't afford to sell Roberto a bank. Yeah, and that's how to do it. I mean, he's definitely jammed on that six. If you leave him too much of an angle, Roberto's definitely firing that ball. It. I mean, he can still bank that 11. Just got to stay underneath the three ball if you do. And that, yeah, it might be too thin of a cut to do that. Can push through to rail the 11 onto your side and just leave him straight on the six again. At the point. Oh man, that's gonna do it. Oh, brutal. All right, Roberto got to get on this six ball. Cut for the win. Missed, missed his out ball. It's in a funny place. You kind of see him firing those balls quick. Almost like he's not taking it seriously, but you can you can feel that it's it's gotten to him. I think that eight ball is still sticking with him. I think you just got to come across the high side of the six here. Zach's ready to move on. Does that mean they're going to get back in this game? Or I'm going to rack them up. Drills that bank. What a shot, man. Zach's not messing around. And Roberto's got to be feeling it. I th think that nine's in the way of the two-railer here. No way you're thinning that towards your hole. Just bank it up towards that nine ball. Creeping back in. Zach's got three of them. He needs them all. Birdo's two railer looks like it's probably blocked on the nine. Six ball, you can get away with it. It's a pretty wide, it catches the inside of the three. That's a good roll. Clip on the six. Ah, oh, that three ball lined up funky for Roberto. It gives you a little more room to work on the left side of the table. I think I'm gonna bank the six ball here. Reel it out of there. Two railer coming up on that six ball. It's nice because you get a lot of room to just freeze on that rail too. A little bit wide. The Z bank's open, and we've seen Zach shoot a couple of those. Wouldn't be surprised to see him shoot this one. Little wide. Ooh. All right. Leaves Roberto a bank for the win. 
Kind of got to play the pass around this. He's hit these wide a few times. That looks in the hole to me. There it is. All right, taking it down. Two to one lead there for Roberto. Zach to break. And here we are at the 2024 Derby City Classic. I, I always really feel for these more popular players at these events. I mean, you've seen a bunch of interaction from the audience um, with Roberto. And you just, that has to affect your focus. There's, but I mean, that's, all these players have to do it. You got to find a way through that stuff. And Roberto is a social guy. Definitely you see him talking and laughing and playing around a lot, but it's cost him a couple balls there. See if Zach can take down game number four. Barely missing that wing ball. We've seen four really good breaks here. Um, it looks like he's got enough of the nine to work with here. Gonna take it on the five ball. Trying to do something real aggressive, just double him up. Look out corner. Well, he gets a spread on it, but nothing doing yeah and Roberto's just seems eager to get out of this one he really wants to open those balls out looks like playing off the back or top side of the seven caught it real thin but good speed Whew, almost sold that Roberto's in traffic. Might move that five ball and try and get in that crook between the two, three. Goes aggressive again, gets away with it. Whew. That's pretty fortunate. <clears throat> now Zach's in traffic. Looks like he's got that whole six. I think he can slide between the one nine. You can think about knocking the two towards your hole and coming up table, but you're definitely gonna leave a tester for Roberto on the 13. If you can leave him real straight on that 13 so he can't do much with it. Wow, that's a pretty fortunate rub there, too. Kind of going tit for tat on those. But you play the right shot and good things can happen from there. Grady Matthews says that all the time. A lot of good things can happen from there. Still looking to get aggressive. Looks like... Uh, the back cut on the six is there. Taking a look at that 13. I don't think it goes. High side of the two's got a great path to get underneath the 10 ball. Looks like he's taking on the six. The four. Doesn't overhit it. Doesn't quite get behind it, but it'll do. He exposes the one ball, and the one ball you can do some damage with. Uh, you really got to make sure how you're making contact with a seven, but you can get that one ball moving towards your hole. All right, he didn't want to go into the traffic, and I don't blame him. Still protects the two. But Roberto's got more room to work here. Yeah, might have even been trying to nudge that two a little further out.
Looks like playing the seven. Is he doing something with the four ball? Yeah, he did have the bottom of that seven. That'll do. You still protect that two ball. Still give him the bottom of that. You'd kind of like him to move the 11-1 here. It doesn't work out for you anyway. And he's getting them all the way under there. Using that rail to his advantage. It's a big deal. Two rail on the 11. Two rail on the 7. I... That worked out great. Nice shot. Less to work with for Roberto right now. Um, I mean, trying to play off the 11 to come underneath it, off the eight. It's a lot trickier shot. This is tough control. He's really got to make sure he gets all the way down there too. Beautiful shot. And all the way up table off the floor. I didn't realize he had that ball. Beautiful. Need to take notes on this one. These guys are playing these great. 10 off the 14. Wow. Gets away with it again. That's good shot. Good outcome. This has the makings of a long game. Got more than half of them above the head string and a 0-0 ball count. I mean, at this point you're protecting your two ball, but you've only got one on your side. The 4 9 15 are lined up a lot better for Zach than they are for Roberto. To rail this out, follow your cue ball. Then off the 15, trying to get to the back side of the 2. Yeah, that's tricky. You gotta hit that ball really thin. Or just don't commit to getting underneath it. Yeah. Good shot. I like knocking the 15 into traffic. Kind of starting to form the wedge. Freeze behind the 9. Off the nine, gets to the rail. Ten balls above the halfway line. This is one pocket. Uh, there is a new rule here at Derby City Classic this year. There's a two hour mark and a three hour mark that has to do with the head string. Not sure how far along we are, but we might see that come into play. tries to force something to happen doesn't get the role he wanted I think Roberto will just play the 9 and back bank the 2 to get back up table might try to go there now though yep hasn't been banking the ball really confidently but this is huge opening
Gets there to the eight, but just barely. He's got a good angle to come over and back. Slips in there, gets stuck on the 11. Hmm. I want to say the six off the three, but you're at a weird angle to do it. Uh, the six ball does bank. It's like just banking that six. Yeah, taking a swing at it. All right, Roberto picking out a few of them. Doesn't really want to move the six. He'd like to do whatever he can to protect it. He's trying to bank this five ball. Oh, it's an unfortunate double kiss. That was a tight little window to get through. Ah, uh, but yeah, I mean, still leaving him partially jacked up over this ball. Nope, he's got enough to cue. And real free shot here for Roberto. Yep, darn it. Just rattling that ball. Uh, this is cuttable for Zach, and there's no reason you wouldn't. Right up against that wall there. You got a chance of getting back behind the five, but I think I'm really just trying to make this ball natural over and back. Look outside pocket. How did he hit it? Man, oh man. Beautiful shot there for Zach. Uh, good enough line to draw back for this three ball, too. Might want to go a little bigger. He might be trying to get behind the seven. Tries to get behind it. Doesn't quite get there. Back cut on the 13. Okay. can also bank that 14, double him up on the 13. I like it. If you make it, you get the 13 next. That's a smart shot. A little short. All right. Three to two. That turned around quick. Roberto just going to two rail this out, follow it down with a cue ball, moves the 14, very effective shot. <laughs> 13 over to your side, cue ball down to the rail. Interesting. Rubbing that three off the rail. So I'm doing that. Boy, that's a lot of control when you're hitting that ball that close to the pocket. Beautiful shot.
I mean, he does use that ball as a blocking ball, but I'm, I'm not sure why he'd want to move that ball off the rail. It seems like it's in a, in a better position now for Zach. He is blocking out a good portion of the table, though. And yeah, I could just be thinking he's going to make him move the ball he wants him to move. I like this, just thin enough the three and back on it. Not really giving him any room to work. At this point, Roberto can move that three more and come down table if he'd like. I like putting distance here. I like playing off the 14 and coming down to the right side of your screen. Roberto's definitely got to be aware that that 12 banks for Zach. Good shot. Not anymore. Um, and now with nothing really going on Zach's side, that one ball is a dead bank. Got a good chance of getting to the backside of a ball here, too. Uh, that seven ball's trouble for him, though. He checked that with inside, and that might have really cost him. I mean, Zach can follow the seven ball down. He's got a shot at getting behind the one. All right, he's staying down on this side of the table. Wow. Hangs the ball up, gets behind the... That's the 10 ball up there. Whew. Deadly shot. Deadly, deadly shot. As much as you'd like to be running balls, you're almost glad that ball didn't go in. He's going to have to get behind something. He's got a lot of room to do it, too. That 12-4, 11-14 are kind of inhibiting any kind of real run for Zach. It looks like he can just pocket the 15 and play behind the 4-12. He wants to do something fun. Yeah, I like just rolling behind the 412 here. That 7 is on the rail, too. I mean, you can play off the 13 and back underneath the 11. I don't see the reason to jack up and play Superman right now, but I am not Superman. I get it that it's hard to just do something defensive here. You know he's got a ball stuck. Um, yeah, oftentimes in this game, you play those couple shots that give you that opportunity to have a better look. Because this looks like nothing doing to me. I mean, jacking up and banking that 10 looks pretty dangerous. Alright, so using the position of the seven ball, still moving some balls, getting stuff down table. It's an effective shot. Zach might be able to work with this four ball. One ball is just far enough out of Roberto's pocket that it's not as much of a threat as it could be.
plays the bank. That looks good to me. Wow. How does that ball not fall? But it doesn't. And, I mean, Roberto's got a real decision here. He's, you're not going to win this game without shooting, but he's rattled so many balls. It's got to be in the back of his mind. Get, yep, just four, make the seven ball, get the four out of there. He won't even move it, just make the seven. Three, three ball count. You're playing off the top side of the one to get back under the 12 11. Really got to pin that cue ball because the one's going to be makeable if that's how you play it. Yeah, this is, this is tough. Looks like he's going to try thinking about playing off the four. Kind of getting in that same position. As much as you'd like to leave that four alone, I think that's a smart shot. How'd he hit it? Wow, <laughs> excellent shot. Leaves him doubled up there, still leaves a four in front of his hole. Pretty, pretty stroke on that one. Roberto saying anywhere else. It's almost like he meant to do that. Good shot, Zach. Squeaking under there. Well, ball banks. It's, you really got to pick a path, though, through those balls. Such a dangerous spot of the table to be. I mean, you can you can just draw this ball, though. He doesn't like it. Really wants to protect that four ball, and that's good thinking. If you can play the 10, two rails, and spin underneath that 13, 14. It's tight, really tight right there. doesn't quite get there all right oh well, surrenders the four ball not sure if Roberto will just two rail that out of there or try to shoot it as one yep it's going back up table Doesn't want to move the one yet. Roberto's got a free two railer on the 14 ball here. It's a good shot. It's going to hang. Wow. Man, doesn't get much closer than that. I think a lot of players play this rail first, try to move the one over to your side. Really easy to sell a bank that way. Um, yeah, just squatting it. He can't bank that one at you. It's a good shot.
Risky shot there. Doesn't quite get there. It's lucky he didn't catch that 13. It looks like he can... Oh man, jacked up over that ball makes it tough. Be nice to be able to bank that 15 and float down under the one. But again, jacked up from that distance makes it tough. Let's play off the top side of the three, back under the one as well. I think that's what he's looking at. Boy, perfect line. seen Roberto shoot this a couple times. He kind of overcuts this one just so it gets back over to his side. I really like that shot, especially if you get behind the 14, or yeah, 14, 13. That's tricky. I like it. I like just banking the one out of there at the 15. Maybe you tie him up. You at least get it out of the out of his hole a little bit. So he's trying to play the 15 into the one. This is a little riskier way to go about it. No, he's just banking. Not afraid of the one ball. It's a really good shot there. Also, almost gets behind the 14-13. Roberto's not going to bank this ball, it doesn't look like. It's there, yeah. I couldn't almost catch the bottom side of that one. I just didn't think he would because he hasn't shot it a couple times from, it seemed like a better angle. He sees what it, what it looks like way better than I do, though. Definitely getting touchy down there. And again, jacked up over a ball. Play off the top side of the 15 and under the one if you want. It's a very passive shot. But getting too aggressive here can get you in trouble. Roberto only needs four. That is just, I want to move the cue ball as little as possible. I like the top side of the 15. I feel like that's my easiest chance to control both balls. Looks like he's got a great bridge elevated over there. He's shooting. Look at that shot. Wow. If that's not the best shot he's hit all day, I don't know what is. What a shot there. Gets to 4-4. Four, four. <laughs> Roberto calls him a sellout. <laughs> I don't think so there, Roberto. Wow. Look at that shot. Unreal. And yeah, also in Zach's defense, it's pretty wild that 15 got around there. Beautiful, beautiful shot there for Zach McGee. Uh, can spin this bank in too. Trying to make sure he doesn't make contact with those balls. Need a lot of outside on this bank. Just getting it on his side. He's more focused on the cue ball. Doesn't quite get there. Leaves him jacked up though. 4-4, four, four. man, we got a game here. What a shot that was.
I think just banking that ball up table. Yep. Adding to the pile. <sighs> he may consider this bank. Yeah, I mean, goes back at his hole. It really depends on how he's going to interact with that 12-3. He may be considering the kick to Oh, the 10 ball 10 ball's a great shot Bank that 10, hopefully get underneath those So kind of had to hit that ball firm Roberto's just going to knock these two up table And he's going to freeze on that ball No, he's shooting he wants to see this ball in the pocket. Yes, he is. And he hits those good. He's hit a couple nasty combos. It's so funny how that works in this game. I mean, a cut can look like this totally tough thing, and all of a sudden he sees that, and it's just wired for him. Thinning off the 13. Just creating the wedge. He's taking his one and running. Roberto needs three. I would be thin enough the 13 and coming all the way down table. He wants to move these around a little more. Well, doesn't get him moving, but definitely gets down table. Then off the 11 and back down. He might be able to make that 10 ball and get behind those balls. Might be a little steep for that. Gotta be real careful here to not make a ball. It's so easy to do that. Roberto can do that to make that 10 ball and freeze right behind that 11 12. Yes, indeed. The 11 12 pointed at his hole also. Almost got it. Looks like you consider thin enough the three. I don't think he's going to consider back cutting the four ball. If he's back cutting the four, he's doing so to get back underneath the 13 three. Wow, and that's, I mean, you can get that ball towards your hole. Just really got to make sure you end up up there. That's too long of a distance. Yeah, that was asking a lot. All right, Roberto with a chance here. All right. So here we go. We're hearing the referee give the two-hour mark there, explaining that there's four balls in the kitchen. Uh, if another ball enters the kitchen, the closest ball to the head rail is going to be spotted. So it's one of these express rules of one pocket they're trying to trying to work with what an unfortunate thing to have happen right there too i mean zach makes the first mistake he's made in 45 minutes uh you get a tight match here and just any it just throws such a wrench in things a uh, spot shot and pretty natural shape on the four let's see if roberto can knock it down undercuts it again all right well, a 6-4 lead for Roberto Gomez. He's leading two games to one. It's only five balls on the table, so the two-hour mark probably isn't going to come in in this game, but keep your eye on it. Got a 
free bank here on the 14. Tricky to not overhit that ball. Well, and that's a bummer. This is pretty free also, and Roberto's got a good chance of getting safe if he misses too. So cutting this four ball, and I'm pretty sure just drifting behind the 10. He looks like he's drawing off it. He hits that slip draw stroke really well though. Wow, he hit that ball beautifully. Man, oh man. Well, I'm not gonna say it. I'll just say that was a nice shot there. Gets good shape on the 10 ball. This has been a heck of a match. So far, Roberto ready to shoot this ball. And it looks like that thing's in the hole. All right, Roberto Gomez taking that one down three to one against Zach McGee. This is round three of the 2024 Derby City Classic. Thanks for tuning in with Railbirds TV. My name is Summerfield Habner. Stay tuned, we got a ton more Derby City Classic action coming your way.